So, Hi. yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Angie Byron, aka Webchick, and I are at NYC Camp 2014 at the United Nations headquarters, and it is an amazingly exciting space to be in. We've got all sorts of people from all around the world that, that, we've, that have, we've had lunch with, Portraits of the Secretary's General on the wall, amazing artwork everywhere. It's a, I found, found it an incredibly stimulating atmosphere. Yeah, to be in. yeah. I, uh, and there's just like so much power from being here. I, I felt like really energized coming in here because like I, I got into Drupal originally from like sort of a humanitarian angle. I really love the whole open source ethos and around, you know, empowering other people. And I'm just really excited that an organization like the United Nations is using open source and especially Drupal, you know, like our thing to, to, to make a difference in the world. Yesterday, we went to a keynote address by the CITO of the United Nations, and she was talking about the role of technology in change, the, making the world a better place. And could you share a little bit of your thoughts on what she had to say? Yeah, well, one, one thing I thought that was really interesting was her emphasis, uh, like we always think as idealistic programmers and stuff like that, that everything that we do with technology is going to make the world a better place. But I thought that it was interesting because she challenged that notion a little bit to like actually look at the full picture and really think 50 years ahead and what, what the actual social and economic and environmental impact of those things will be. And I thought that was really thought provoking, actually, because I... Um, you know, often we get we get caught in like, oh, I have to fix this bug or I, I just need to make this one feature for this one client, but then ignore um, the other ways that those things could be used both to the benefit and the detriment of, of humanity. So I thought that was kind of a neat angle to push, um, you know, just kind of thinking broader than our own selves in, in terms of our, our impact on the world as open source developers. I found it a little challenging to think 50 years ahead <laughs> yeah. when she did that. And I found that a little bit abstract and right at the end of the conversation, some specific sort of immediate actionables came out. And I thought, hey, Drupal could actually play a part in making the world better soon. Mm -hmm. um, let's go through some of those areas uh, that we could maybe, where we could affect change as the Drupal project. Yeah, so one, one thing she mentioned is, you know, when you're, when you're talking about a lot of the areas in the world that are sort of the worst off, um, you don't have really thick bandwidth and stuff like that. So there's a lot of mobile devices over there, uh, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, things where there's a crisis that happens and suddenly you need to mobilize a huge effort to get down there and find people. So the areas that she emphasized that really need, uh, are really help enable that work are things like mapping, so the ability to uh, take data, plot it on a map, and say these are all the earthquake victims, for example, that are that are out, out, out in Haiti at the, at the moment. Uh, she also mentioned predictive analysis. So, you know, it's it's you know it's one thing to respond to a disaster, you know, once it's occurred and be on the ground and and, and helping people. But wouldn't it be great if, based on these various factors, we could predict that? Um, this area is going to run out of food by the summer if we don't do something now. And we were able to avert disaster in advance. And I think Drupal could play a really big part in this, both because we, we have, you know, we always have modules we can tie together, do mapping and things like views to do uh, nice graphs and analytics and things like this. But I think the real power in Drupal and, and what I get excited about in that sort of work is, uh, you know, essentially what we do as Drupal developers is we make really abstract, complicated, you know, programming concepts accessible to non-developers. You know, when we write things like the views module, you can do very sophisticated queries and charts and maps and all kinds of things just by clicking a few buttons without having to understand 
all the code that comes underneath it. So what I get really excited about is the idea that Drupal, and particularly Drupal 8, could be this vehicle through which we create really easily accessible, you know, things that could be piped through a mobile application or usable on the on the internet and, and used as a, as a tool to help those people who are on the front lines trying to make the world a better place and, and we could build technology to enable that. Josh Koenig's session yesterday also touched on Drupal's activist roots mm -hmm. and how we could use Drupal's powers for good and to enable more activism, to enable more communication, direct communication between stakeholders and, for example, uh, help people in developing countries simply talk with each other and exchange the information that they need yeah. to make their own situations better. So I think we do have a lot of um, actionable chances to make a difference and it's something that I find really exciting. Yeah, I mean one of the one of the core pieces that Drupal really helps people do is is community, right? And what you're talking about there is enabling a local community to meet each other and find each other and and talk to one another and, and engage even if they can't do that physically because of whatever means. And I think Drupal's a, a wonderful tool for enabling that as long as we can get the the user experience right so that it's accessible to as many people as possible. I suppose Drupal 8's loosely coupled architecture and the fact that it can ingest any kind of data and output any other kind of data, not just a web page, right, is also going to end up being a, a, a tool in that, in that, a weapon in that arsenal. I think so, yeah. There's a, there's a few features of Drupal 8 that will really help empower this. And the, the Web Services Initiative is, is the, probably the biggest one because, um, as you said, like what, what it will do is, is transform Drupal 8 from this thing that assumes that everything that it's serving out to is a desktop browser, fully rendering full HTML pages, and instead just turns everything into a request and a response. Um, and, and so we can do things in Drupal 8, like have Drupal 8 be your central repository where you keep all of the locations of where people are, and you can easily update on the website, but then also have that piped out to a mobile application on the crappiest phone you can imagine, um, you know, that, that has a real-time, you know, update of where people are. So when you're on the ground and you have your GPS coming in, you can, you can actually locate somebody who's trapped under a roof or something like that. Right, so. and I suppose with push notifications in place, when you, when you are in a an area where something needs to happen or where you could do something or where you need to know that, hey, danger, there is something, there are mines in this area, the don't drink the water here, you could get notifications there right, as well. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm, not, I'm not as familiar with like mobile application development, but the, the potential for that is enormous because all cell phones basically are just tons and tons of sensors for telling where you are in the world or, you know, vibrating when something happens or sending a text message with a code that will explain, you know, the, the layout of the land or whatever. It's, it's like the, the possibilities are, are virtually limitless. And the idea that Drupal could be the hub that powers that stuff is really, really exciting, I think. Here at Nice Camp at the United Nations, there's actually been a ton of Drupal sprinting going on and a lot of work to finish up all of the bright new shiny features <laughs> yeah. that we've got coming. And there's, we've been talking in public a lot about CMI and about web services initiatives and about a lot of technical stuff. But let's talk a little bit about when you have those in place, what the benefits are to different groups of people who then work with Drupal. Sure, yeah. Um, I think the, the one that people are the most excited about is, is the configuration management system or CMI, it's sometimes abbreviated. Uh, what this allows is for you to easily migrate your, your stuff from a development server to a production server uh, it, because one of the great benefits of Drupal is that, you know, you just click around in the interface and stuff happens and it's wonderful until you need the things that you clicked to happen on another site in another environment. And uh, there's currently a lot of different, you know, things that we use for that features module or writing update functions or lots of different technical things. Um, and, and it's all sort of kludgy, and by building that into core, it's going to be a lot easier for people. So the tangible benefit that, that people should see from that, um, because a lot of people don't know what deployments are and things like that, but what they'll see, they should see, is a dramatic reduction in the amount of time it takes to do builds and interim feature requests and things like that, because it's all built into core. So you just get the workflow down, build it all out in your development environment, do an export, import into production, and you're good to go. Right, um, so, so... Yeah, I think that's a... It's going to be a money saver for people. It's going to be a time and effort saver for people. 
and you know all of the stuff we tracked in version control so it'll be a lot more seamless there's a lot of really great like both tangible business benefits and also just like sanity benefits for Drupal developers sure so we can we can picture it I am working with my client I get the development the test site just where they want it their authoring experience whatever they need is ready and more or less at a click of a couple buttons all of that weeks of work and setting things up then moves out to where the real live website is and it's usable and we move on to our next exciting project. Exactly. Yep. And you do that without any fear of overwriting any content on the on the production site because like, the last thing you want to do is like replace your welcome page with test test test. You know, <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> isolate do that. So so yeah, a lot of a lot of work going into Drupal to make those sort of moving things from one place to the other, and then that creates a safe environment where you can get sign off from the clients and make sure things are working properly, and then take and everything that was done, move it over to the other place along with a log of what happened, and it's it's all pretty pretty awesome. So uh, time and money saver is a pretty tangible benefit <laughs> yeah. to, to, to everybody. Yep. So when you are the end user of a Drupal site today, when you have, whether you built it yourself, whether someone else built it for you, you generally have less technical people who are putting photos on it, mm -hmm. adding media, writing articles, and they have to deal with it. And it's very, been very hard for us to give them a happy experience on the back end, limit, limit their access so that they don't cause problems and that they can actually just get their jobs done well. Talk about how Drupal 8 is solving that set of problems. Right, yeah, so a, a huge uh, initiative in Drupal 8 was um, was the authoring experience initiative where we went out, we as uh, Acquia's Spark team went out and looked at all kinds of different CMSs out there. So we looked at, you know, not only just the typical ones like WordPress, but also some of the proprietary competitors like Sitecore, CQ5, things like that. And we, we took a look at those and we sort of said, what are the areas that they have and Drupal doesn't, or they do better than Drupal and these kinds of things. And so we worked on a lot of authoring experience features. So they include things like WYSIWYG and Core, uh, the ability to in place edit things, kind of a, uh, we, we help fund a redesign of the back end content edit form to make it more accessible to people. So the content authors should, should see a dramatic uh, in, increase in like when they when they use Drupal, it should be a lot more seamless out of the box. All of the stuff I just mentioned is available in Drupal 7 as well. Um, the advantage of it being built into core though is that it's really, really easy to configure your WYSIWYG editor incorrectly and actually open up security problems on your site, which is not good. Um, Do you remember that there was an entire module in Drupal 6 to configure the tiny MCE oh, yeah. WYSIWYG editor? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, it, and that module was like 300 lines long because it had to toggle this, that, and turn on this checkbox. I mean, it, it was insane. So, so tightening that up has been, has been amazing. And, and the other thing it really helps with is really the adoption of Drupal itself. Because if you download WordPress and you download Joomla and you download Drupal, Drupal being like a frame location kind of thing, it's, it's, it's like, what is this thing? What does it do? I don't know, but this, I'm going to use WordPress. And so we lose a lot of people right out of the gate because it doesn't look like a CMS. It doesn't behave like a CMS. So having features like that in there will hopefully help the adoption of Drupal itself because it looks and acts like everybody else. Um, so I'm really excited about those things. And, and just anything that we can do to make Drupal more accessible to non-technical people, I think, is a, is a really valuable thing because those people are the ones who are actually using our tool to get their business goals done or to change the world or whatever they're doing with our product. I think um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to be able to empower people like that to do their, their, their jobs. And we should be presenting users with the simplest possible interface to get what they need to do done and nothing more. An incredible aha moment for me was when I understood, oh, D8's backend is now built with views, mm -hmm. right? We lose a bunch of boilerplate code, we get a lot of efficiency out of that, but actually, I understand how views works, I can modify the admin interface for myself or anyone else who needs it simply by knowing how views works. Exactly. So this is this incredible empowerment, I think, and it, I also suspect that it can lead to really precise simple interfaces for every kind of user. For sure, yeah, because if you're uh, if you're a photo upload website, you don't need a content listing that's just got titles. What you want to see is the pictures, right? So you just change the content listing, so now you see all of your pictures and then whatever other columns. Similarly, I don't know how many 
times I've had to make like an admin user to view that had a search box on it for like first and last name. Those kinds of things will just be just configurable out of the box. So there's a lot of tools in there to make it easier for site builders to build a highly focused and you know like granular interface for the specific tasks that the people using the site need to do. And I think that's just going to make Drupal a much better product. And the, the thing I'm excited about all of this stuff shipping with Core is that you know, the first 30 hours or whatever of a Drupal project is often just like massaging all the things, putting the right modules in the right places, tweaking the right checkboxes to get it to look like a normal thing. And, you know, now in Drupal 8, you start there. And so now you can spend that first 30 hours actually solving the customer's problem instead of trying to get to a base, you know, point or having to mess with distributions and these other things. And Drupal 8 is incorporating components from Symphony 2. Gazel. Uh, I know it's very moving. <laughs> oh, Gazel. <laughs> <laughs>